Hello and welcome to the CMT Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst. Today's date is Monday the 18th of October, 18th of December, and uh, the time has just gone 12.15 p.m. 12.15 p.m. GMT, 12.15 UK time. As always with the webinars, what I'll do is I will leave the risk warning on screen here for you to have, to have a read of that. Uh, it essentially states uh, whatever is discussed in this webinar is entirely my own personal views and opinions and comments, not to be construed as explicit investment or trading advice. Uh, this is something that will keep my compliance department quite happy and it's all fairly, fairly straightforward. And for those of you who tune in regularly to our webinars and also our education videos, you will know it's all, it's all fairly standard stuff. So while I'm leaving the risk warning on screen in front of you there, I'll just, just have a quick rundown of what's been going on in the markets over the past few days. The big news is, uh, is that equity markets are quite strong this morning. There's a lot of high hopes that the US lawmakers will vote this week uh, to, to pass the uh, tax proposals that Donald Trump uh, was talking about on the, on the on route, on the, on the journey to the White House. And Mr. Trump was elected uh, over a year ago. He's been in office since January last year. And it's taken obviously some time to get to get here, but it does appear that he's finally actually going to get uh, the he's going, to, he's going to get the tax reforms that he that he wanted. If not quite in, in exact same uh, fashion that he that he would have wanted, or as a um, as a um, as direct and and uh, be as low level in terms of co uh, tax rates, particularly corporate tax. But that is politics for you. Um, compromise is required. So uh, so. Stock markets, uh, particularly the U.S. market, has been rallying for several for, for, for a long time now in anticipation of this of this being approved, and th there is more and more talk that the that the that the, that the, uh, that the, US, that the U.S. government will be voting on it this week, trying to get it wrapped up before Christmas. Speaking with the political um, the political political theme over in Germany, the Germany is still without a functioning government, but later this week. The Christian Democratic Union Party, the CDU, headed by Angela Merkel, are to meet with Martin Schulz, the party of the Social Democrats, the SPD, the Social Democratic Party. Uh, they have been coalition partners in the past, and and on the back of the most recent general election in uh, in Germany, which didn't actually give a majority to one single party, it, it, there was talk that this 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 that this uh, coalition was going to be reformed. And the, the two parties are meeting, uh, are, are, are agreeing to meet to uh, discuss the possibility of talks this week. So, high hopes in the United States, in the United States for political reform, and also high hopes in, uh, in in Germany for a potential deal, which could see a functioning government be returned to Germany. Bearing in mind, we've had some stellar economic indicators out of Germany in recent weeks, which would have accounted for the time period. That when well, there actually was no functioning government, so the economy, German economy is taken on just fine without it. It's one of those things that a, the prospect of a functioning government boosts the, the economic sentiment, but at the same time, the economic sentiment, economic indicators were, 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 were providing the boost all along. So, what I'll quickly do is, as always with, with our webinars, I'll give you a quick rundown of what to keep an eye out for this week. There's a few bits and pieces, as you can imagine, it's, it's the week we're running up to Christmas. Uh, we, so, there, there are, so, things, so some traders and investors aren't going to be uh, away from the markets, so we could see a lot of volatility. Uh, but turning our attention to the economic calendar and looking ahead to tomorrow on Tuesday, first thing in the morning, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, German IFO business sentiment, keep an eye out for that. At half one on Tuesday, we have the house, housing starts from America at, uh, at lunchtime at half one UK time. Taking over to Wednesday, uh, we have PPI numbers out of Germany at 7 o'clock in the morning. We have existing home sales coming out um, of the United States at 3 p.m. As we do every single Wednesday at half three, we have the major, we have the oil the inventories and the gasoline figures coming out. Looking at Thursday, uh, we have uh, public sector net borrowing from the UK at half nine. At half one, we have, we have the CPI numbers coming out of Canada and we also have Canadian retail sales. Uh, what else we have on half one on Thursday is, is of course, uh, the U.S. GDP for the third quarter. That's probably the biggest one, uh, one, one of the biggest economic indicators of the week. And arguably the second biggest economic, uh, economic indicator of the week is going to be U.K. GDP, uh, which, which comes out at half nine on Friday morning. 
also on Friday we also have a, have a GDP update from Canada at, at half one. We also have some spending figures uh, and person consumption figures coming out of the United States at half one on Friday. So what I'll do is um, I'll run through the major indices, uh, commodities and currency pairs and if there are any markets that you want to have a quick look at, uh, please feel free to just type in the chat box and I'll, I'll, I will cover them. So take a look now, first off the bat, at the FTSE 100. What we can see here on the FTSE 100 is that we've actually finally managed to appear to snap out of the downward trend that that market has been in since November. The market in November pushed higher, didn't quite take off the all-time high uh, that was created in early June. Managed to push lower, created a, a lower low, high, a lower high, and another lower low. But now that we push back north of that, and we're approaching, uh, we're, we're come well above the 7,500 mark. As you can see here, the market is pushing higher. I'm looking at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, and you can see the clear swing to positive, positive side on the momentum indicator. Positive momentum is interest growing by the confirming the upward move in the underlying market. So you can get the more confidence that this, that this move that we're seeing here is going to last. The market's pushing higher. The next big left to potentially keep an eye out for is it heads up towards this area, this quite consolidation area here of around 7,561. And if you go north of that, then the 7,600 level could be the next big left level to watch out for. Any moves to the downside may find support in around the 50 day moving average in a 7,560 or south of that down towards the 200 day moving average just north of 7,400 itself. But if you do manage to kind of move south of the 200 day moving average we could be looking at heading back down towards the December low of 7,278. As you mentioned the share market is quite strong uh, given that people are uh, have high hopes about uh, the political outcome in Germany. What we can see here is after several weeks of large consolidation and kind of indecision, we finally actually managed to, uh, to appear to have managed to have broken out of that range bound move. Today, um, we've hit the highest level not, not seen since the Thursday, the 9th of November. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't recall that, that was the night where there was a major sell off, at the very, that's when the Nikkei dropped a thousand points and also. There's a surge in the end, which also, of course, compounded the issue. But that move that we're seeing here uh, from early November, that was the move uh, that, that, that originated in Japan. And no one, there's a few several, there's, there's a few reasons that were put out there as an explanation for the move, but there was, there was no consensus as to what actually drove that move. So that kind of really rattled the global, global markets. And it would appear that we're finally actually snapping out of that trend. The broad theme for the last few weeks has been to the upside we finally managed to create the highest level in about five or six weeks. Also the MACD indicator we can just about see, I've been assuming quite close here, we can see that there, there is an increase in positive momentum. So the momentum is with the bulls. Should we manage to kind of go, go north of this price here, uh, which comes into play at the low from the 1st of November at, at 13,316 where that where the gap was created. Should we go, should we um, should we go north of that again? I should manage to manage a, a decisive move beyond that. We could be looking to head back up towards the November high and the all time high of 13,534. Even if we do kind of move, move to the downside, we may find some support in around the 100 day moving out, sorry, the 50 day moving average in around the 13,100 region. If we did see a lot of price consolidation, 50 or 100 points on either side of that metric over the last few weeks. Should we move south again, we could find support, some support in around this area here, the 13,000. And it's only really if we actually make a decisive, have a decent move south of 13,000, then could we potentially be worried as the market's turning over on itself. And if we do, if we do, if it does turn over on itself, the big level to keep an eye out for will be the December low of 12,810. That, that, that could be the, the, the decider between uh, properly turning over on itself or whether it's actually a bit of a correction. We turn our attention now to the US markets, which are in quite decent shape. Record highs created last Friday are obviously kind of high hopes and expectations. Um, the Italian market, yes, I'll do the Italian market, uh, the BIP, the FTSE BIP, uh, in one second time. So, let 
looking at the SP 500 here, it's been a solid upward trend for seven months for, 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 for quite some time now. It's been a classic example of higher highs and higher lows. My momentum isn't really showing any signs of slowing down. As you can see here, we're hitting all time highs here. That tells you everything, you know, most of what you need to know. That's the direction of the market. We can see a fairly uh, obvious uh, increase in positive momentum as the market is moving up. So momentum is in the buyers. Next level to potentially watch out for is the upside. It could be 2,700. And then, of course, as we are in uncharted territory, we could be looking towards um, big psychological numbers 2,710, 20, 30, so on and so forth, all the way up to 2,800. Move to the downside, may find some support in around this area here, the highs of the middle of last week, in around the 2,670 level, or perhaps even down as low as the 2,650 region in around here. But find that the dip has been a fairly common theme for, for the SP and also the, the, uh, the Dow Jones over the last few months. And the chart on, on the, the Dow Jones doesn't look too dissimilar. It's been in a solid upward trend, creating higher highs and higher lows as we, as we move along. Looking at the market indicator, it's been firmly on the kind of positive side due to the momentum indicator. If we do happen to have any pullbacks, we may find some support in around the 24,535 or 24,500 region in around here. If we have a sizable pullback, we may find some support coming into play in around 24,071. But looking to the upside, the next big psychological number to watch out for would be 25,000, which we're less than 200 points away from. And then beyond 25,000, the next big number will be 26,000, which you have to keep an eye out for. I'll have a look now at the Italian market. The bib. So take a look now at the, at the Italian market. One of the things that I, which I didn't actually, I was tempted to put it, um, put it up on Twitter and put up a chart form, but I didn't. One of the things that I was considering about the, uh, the, the Italian market is in, we could be looking at the beginning, there's only a possibility, we could be at the beginning of a head and shoulders reversal pattern. Uh, so we see a rally into the market here. I'll just draw the draw the um the, 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 uh, the circle. So it's a head and shoulders reversal pattern. I'll just map it out for you now by putting in these uh these, these circles. It's where a market pushes rallies to a certain point and pulls back to a reaction low, which is here, then pushes higher yet again, and the height of this is exceeds the previous high and then the market moves back to the reaction lows pushes higher again fails doesn't quite get fails to get as high as the as, as the high here and often gets uh, they're on the same height or slightly below the previous high here so it kind of looks like a head a head and a shoulders and why i say that we could be potentially in the beginning of that one because in order for a head and shoulders to, to fully form the market will need to fall below what's called the neckline. And the neckline is where you draw a line along here where the reaction low is created and you go you go horizontal. If the market is already bounced off the neckline once here, so that obviously has, has it isn't obviously head and shoulders yet, it has the potential to be so. So if on the odd chance the market does make a decisive break below this area here in around the 22,000 22, level, we could, be, we could be looking at a head and shoulders reversal. And kind of a textbook example of a head and shoulders reversal, reversal would actually tell us that the market would trade below the neckline and often retrace to the neckline before moving south again. But seeing as we've actually managed to actually gain support from that price area here, we've no kind of signs yet that we could be in the middle of a head and shoulders reversal. For the time being, the market has managed to not only was stay above this, this this the support region here of the kind of mid November lows and also the kind of mid October lows. So for the time being, while the kind of twenty two thousand mark is acting as support, we uh it, it, we we could assume, it, it could be it could be assumed that the kind of wider upper trend may still be in place. And if that were the case, 
first level to watch out for is that the upside will put the December high at 22,844. And then if you take off that, the next level to potentially keep coming off for could be 23,135. But just bearing in mind, if you have a decisive break south of 22,000, we could be looking heading, we could see a move back up to 22,000 before we could potentially see another move to the downside. And how we, um, and how we, um, look to kind of ascertain a price target for a head and shoulders reverse pattern is take the distance between the head, which is say, let's call that 23,000, and the, and the neckline 22,000, about 1,000 points, and project that down the way from the from the breaking of the neckline. So if we do see a decisive break on the neckline, we could see a retracement potentially back down towards 21,000. But to be more confident uh, of, of a head shoulder reversal actually occurring, being, being actually fully uh, playing out, you would like to see the market trade below 22,000 and then move back up towards 22,000 before potentially seeing another move to the downside again. Uh, in relation to the question there saying, it sort of disappeared from the news lately. Uh, and there's a question, is that in relation to the Italian market in general or what disappeared? I'm not unsure of what you're trying to say there, Tony, in relation to the uh, what disappeared from the market. Um, heading on to the gold market, so you've had, obviously had quite a positive run on global equities. Gold was under severe pressure for the last uh, for, for, for a lot of December, uh, seeing as we had the interest rate decision last week. This positive candle here on Wednesday the 13th was the, inter was the interest rate decision where the Fed, after many months of speculation, finally actually uh, hiked interest rates in the United States by 0.35%. 2.5% is the third interest rate hike of 2018. The outlook they stated in the press conference, um, the outlook for the for the Federal Reserve in 2018 is unchanged. But guess what? There's going to be a lot of change at the Federal Reserve. We still have a couple of Fed members to be announced. Jerome Powell will be taking over from Danny Allen in a in February. So. The outlook, we don't know, for the time being, the Federal Reserve outlook is remaining unchanged. That's all well and good, but the Fed makeup is going to change in the next few months. And until then, we don't know what members are actually going to be on the Federal Reserve, and we don't know what their views are going to be. So I suspect it could be kind of steady as, as she goes, but that may that may all change when we actually know what individuals actually make up the, um, make up the Federal Reserve. So keep an eye on the price here for, for the... Um, for the gold. The market is pushing higher. Uh, to be fair, it is entirely surprising that a decent sell off from 1300 down to, down to around uh, 1236. The market is pushing higher here. We're seeing a steady decline in negative momentum, so selling pressure is waning. The first potential hurdle to keep an eye out for with the 200 day moving average, uh, which is in around the kind of 1270 region. And if we move north of 1270, then the next potential hurdle could be the 100 day moving average at 1286 and then beyond that uh, uh, up towards 1300. Gold spent uh, several weeks kind of in a very narrow range in around here. So uh, you think you can only be kind of more confident that, that a, a positive move or a bullish move was taken off in gold if you actually take out, say, the 100 day moving average at 1286 or indeed the 1300 level. If the market does find out a seam and then turn over on itself, it and continue to get the wider negative trend that's been in place for the last few weeks. The first level to potentially keep an eye out for is going to be the uh, December low of 1236. And if we go south of that, it's a consolidation in around the 1230 region. And then below that, July low of 1204. Yeah, I'll be coming on to currency pairs in a few minutes, so I'll do the spurting team event. Was that uh, just a quick question, Tony? Was everything covered okay on in relation to the the, the Italian market, the the uh, the MIB? I'll just move on to the oil while you are typing. The oil market has uh, has been in reasonable kind of consolidation, kind of range bound over the last couple of weeks. Uh, ever since it was announced at, at the very end of, of November and that the uh, that OPEC were going to be going to be imposing, uh, extending their uh, production cut well beyond, from 
the end of March 2018 until the end of 2018, which is why he's anticipated for the, for the, for the few weeks on the run-up to it. All we've really done is kind of remain in sort of a, a range-bound area. The oil market has been in a solid upward trend since since, uh, since June. Classic example of higher highs and higher lows all the way. We haven't really any, any evidence yet to, to suggest that the upward move is coming to an end. We just haven't really actually seen any kind of any real advancement. Granted, we did hit a fresh 27-month high um, not too long ago, only only last week. But at the same time, the market really kind of failed to make any decent ground on that. Ultimately, I look at the Brent oil contract on a week on a weekly chart. While it remains north of the 200 week moving average, which comes into play about $61 a barrel, and we're currently on 63.70 ish While it's north of the 200 week moving average, the outlook is, is uh, well, could remain positive for Brent oil, and it should, and it should be remain north of it. The next potential level to keep an eye out for is from, is, from, is from a level back in late 2014 of $67.26, and if we go beyond that, the kind of psychological 70 bucks a barrel would then uh, potentially come into play. Moves to the downside in all, may find some, some support in around this price action here of $61.24, which isn't too far away, which kind of coincides with the 50 day moving average as well. And a move below that, may find some support in around this price action here of the September high of $59.51. It's a fairly similar looking chart on the price of WTI. Which I'll turn my attention to now. So, similar to Brent, it's in a, has been in a solid upward trend throughout the, the last six last six months. Granted, it hasn't really made any real additional progress on from the kind of broader sentiment that, was, that we had in uh, the run up until the November OPEC meeting. Um, having a look at this, while we hold north um, of this, this price area here of Five dollars and seventy-two cents. The outlook is going to continue, is likely to remain. The outlook is likely to continue in place. A move to the upside may find a resistance of fifty-nine dollars a barrel and six dollars a barrel. These kind of psychological numbers. And even if you do drop below fifty-five seventy-two, we could find some supply, supply support coming to play in around here at fifty-four seventy-six, or perhaps even down to as low as fifty-four dollars a barrel too. I'll have a look now uh, at the cotton market. I'll have a look now at the cotton market. Well, so quite a major uh, sell-off since 2011. Look at, look at a big picture here on the coffee market, the coffee arabica, the contract we're looking at. Let's remove that line for a second. Right, the wicked chart here. Take a look at this. It's been a fairly obvious kind of downward trend. Look at the late 2014. So that's all. Three years ago, major sell off, pull back some of the losses. That's been a fairly consistent and obvious downward trend since uh, since the uh, November 2016. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Potentially going for another lower low. So we're not too far away from the low of 2017. And if we go south of that, we could be looking back towards the early 2016 low of this price here, which comes into play at 108 spot 83. Um, move to the upside. I think I look now in terms of so the first low to keep an eye out for would be low 2016, low, low, low 2017 at 112 spot 80. Potential uh, areas of resistance from the upside should we see a bounce back? We did see both the, both the 50 and the 100 day moving average they managed. I was I was anxious to say we could see some, some resistance coming to play here on the 120 region here uh, from the no, November low. 
um, moved to the, the north of 120, you may find some, some support, may find resistance in around the 50 day moving average at 122, it's about 93, or indeed at the 100 day moving average at 126 and 62. Notice how it did act as resistance on, on a couple of occasions here in the past. Same with this price action here, even though it did actually manage to trade ever so slightly north of it. Um, the more times a market has, the more times a market has respected a, a moving average in terms of being a, for, for support or resistance, the more likely it is uh, the next time round. But obviously, there are no no guarantees. Right, coming on to the currencies now. Have a look at the euro versus the US dollar. In your questionnaire in relation to does the possibility have an have a have an opposite correlation in the in the main markets? What exactly do, do you mean by that? I'm not entirely sure what you mean to be honest. In the meantime, I will just go to the have a look at the euro dollar. Uh, the euro dollar is obviously at a great run over the past number of months. Try, try 2017, the euro has performed uh, quite well. Ever since actually hit, hitting a month-to-month a -month high in September, managed to give up some of the gains, pushed higher here. High in November, managed to take out the high in October. We could just could suggest that we're looking for we're continuing this wider trend, this upward trend that it's been in, but it's been sort of lackluster in the last number of weeks. And for the time being, it seems to be kind of almost like a magnet uh, drawn to the 50 day moving average, which comes into play in around 117.66. I haven't really kind of moved much, much away from that in the last few trading sessions. So while we remain north of, of the uh, 50 day moving average, it's, li it's likely the, the kind of overall kind of positive move is going to continue. And sh should it move, should it, should it continue, first level, uh, level to keep an eye out for on the upside would be the November high. Of 119.61, and if we go beyond that, then we go back towards 120, and then north of 120, we could be looking into the September high of 120.92. Could be a fairly decent, a decent break south of 117. That could be a sign that we're heading back down towards 116.70, or maybe even as low as 115.54 itself. And if we go south of 115.54, the November low, that then that would actually take it to a, a multi-year low. And we could be looking heading back down towards the July this price here in July. We saw a bit of consolidation in around 114.79. Taking a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. The pound's had a great run. It's been in a positive upward trend since since the uh, lows of November. If you draw a line here, trend line between the November low and the August low, we can see here. But to be fair, it did actually trade south of it on a few occasions, but all managed to kind of hang up, hang above it. Uh, the wider kind of up positive move in the in the pound versus the dollar is still in play. Granted, after a, a, a size of the rally in late November, we have had a pretty um, a pretty poor December in terms of the as far as the pound is concerned. But it's still well, it's still comfortably above north of that trend line. If we do see another move to the downside, we could head back down towards trend line support. She comes to play in around the kind of 132, 60, 70 region. And even if we do move, move south of it, potentially we could also have some support coming into play on the 100 day moving average at in around just, just shy of 132 itself. I still need to move, say, south of, say, about, about 131. Could we then be getting, get a bit nervous and start to think maybe, you know what, the upper trend that has been in has, has come to an end. But for the time being, if it holds above those metrics, I think it's possible we could see the wider upper trend continue. And if you do manage to push higher on the pound versus the dollar, area to keep an eye out for would be 135.48, and then north of that is the September high of 136.59. I'll do a couple of um, currency pairs now. The euro versus the U versus the versus the British pound. It's been very un, very consolidated around the 30 moving average which comes to place at 80 which comes to place in around here just at 88 80. Uh, it's very uh, uh, sorry at 88 rather 0 spot 8 0 spot 8 8 0 0 
there's very much consolidation in around here. To be honest, it's been largely boring for the last number of weeks. But the kind of overall kind of theme has been to the downside. We can see here lower low, lower high, lower low, you know, potentially lower high. We haven't uh, and we've been trading rate kind of range bound ever since. So the last few weeks it has been kind of put to the downside, but at the same time it's been a range bound, so it's hard to kind of it's hard to accurately call which way the market's going to move to move to next. So we do head head south on the 30 moving average at 88. We're going to be looking heading back down towards zero spot 8689. And if we go up below that, we could be looking back to zero spot eight six zero zero. Any move to the upside may come from resistance from the one hundred moving average at zero spot eight nine four five. Notice how it managed to act as resistance here uh, in, in late November. And if we go north of that, we could be looking to head back up towards this quiet area in around here uh, at zero spot ninety forty nine. I will now do the US dollar versus Japanese yen, and then I believe it was the sterling kiwi uh, one that we have a look at. Dollar yen has also been a bit kind of range bound uh, the last few weeks, but we're getting a decent, decent support from the from the 112 area here. So if we hold north of the, of the 112 price area here, we could be looking back up towards the 114 region and north, move north of, uh, of the 114. Might put the uh, that is at least the November high of 114.73 on the, on the table. Moves to the downside. Should we go south of 112? We could be looking heading back down towards just just south of 111 price action from here. And if we manage to take on that low, then we'll be looking at it. We've already have a lower low, potentially a lower high here. And if we take off this low here, that could be a sign that we're heading back down towards the mid September low of 109.55. And then below that, the actual, the actual September low of 107.32. So I'll have a look now. Time has uh, as, uh, as just gone quarter to one. What, what I'll do now is I'll look at the sterling first, the New Zealand, New Zealand dollar, and then let's true wrap it up. So after a fairly sizable sell-off in, in 2018 and 2016, we're finally kind of seeing uh, some kind of upward moves in the pound versus the New Zealand dollar. So we can see here that largely throughout 2017, it's been a positive move and a slow and steady grind, but the, but the, um, but the pound has, has managed to get there. Notice how, as the market is a broad kind of theme, it's been up, move, move to the upside, higher high, low, higher low, higher high. Ran into resistance here. Uh, we did see some similar resistance. Ran out of steam at the 200 week moving average, just shy of two. It came in, in, in play about one spot, 98.57. But it has been, has been kind of almost, like, almost um, trapped between the, the, the 200, day, 200 week moving average to the, the, to the north and the 100 day moving average to the south. And the 100 day moving average comes into play at one spot, 89.93. Sorry, 86.93. So we're looking for a move in our direction uh, outside of that range. Given that it's been actually pushing higher, uh, basically throughout 2017, uh, I suspect we could be looking at, at a break to the upside. But that being said, buying momentum has been tapering off here in the market in Instagram. So we could we could move, look to move south or potentially move higher again. So if we do move south, and seeing as we in these few weeks here, we did get a bit of support from the one week moving average. If we do pull back down to the 100 week moving average, we could be looking at a, a, some, some new some buyers enter the fold potentially, seeing as it has acted as support in the last few weeks. But, but to be kind of more confident of the kind of upward trend that's been in place throughout 2017 as you're continuing, we will want to see a, a sizable break north of the 200 week moving average at one spot 1946. And if we do head north of that, the next areas to potentially keep an eye off, off are here the mid June. High of 2016 at two spot 0720, uh, two spot 0727, and then north of that, two spot one up around, so consolidation in around here. 
Now, just before we actually wrap things up, uh, this is the last uh, Monday Market webinar of 2017. Um, from, from myself, anyways, on, on, on Mondays. On Monday, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, the 20th of December, at half 7 p.m. UK time, half 7 GMT. We have the Next Generation Forex webinar. Uh, and then after that, we'll be looking at webinar. We'll be looking at the the Wednesday webinar on the third of January, twenty eighteen, at half seven U, uh, p.m. UK time. Trading on the edge will be the topic of that webinar. And then myself on Friday, the fifth of January, twenty eighteen, at one fifteen, because it will be non-farm payrolls. Uh, so tune in for that one. Um, if I don't speak to you before then, have a good Christmas, happy holidays. Um, and have a good trading week and good luck.